Linfield took on Balamoney in the under-14 NIBFA Cup second round at a cold but bright Midgley Park in Belfast. Linfield playing in red and white, was Balamoney United turned out in the all-blue colours. Linfield went into the game off some fine form in the league campaign. The visitors started as slight outsiders, knowing that they would have to be at their best. With just 10 minutes played, United were caught in possession. Kyle Sloan fouling Jude Healy, conceding the free kick on the edge of the box. Step up Linfield's left back, William Francy, to smash home the ball into the top corner, giving the host a lead with this classy effort. Balamoney were certainly not intent on going further behind. Rory McAleese had possession. He then conceded it, only for Sloan to step in. He fed the ball to Logan Holmes, who expertly teed up McAleese to find the net. That made it one apiece with 15 minutes gone. United's reply shook Linfield into action. By now, the Belfast side were intent on playing possession football, and it was to pay off in superb style. Jack Berry became the game's most influential player, scoring three goals in total. His first was from all of 25 yards, picking up possession and giving Oren Donnelly no chance in Balamoney's goal. Linfield were growing ever more confident, particularly Berry. Watch this Rabona cross that almost picked out Rory McConville to make it 3-1. Balamoney's midfield were made to work hard as the half drew to a close. Jack Young dispossessed Oshin Casey, inviting fullback Ryan Burns forward. The Linfield player winning a corner kick on this occasion. McAleese and Casey were then involved in the move that very nearly brought United level. Again, Casey's effort was charged down. The ball ran kindly to Cormac McMullen, whose cross picked out McAleese. And McAleese finished again superbly. First time from the Balamoney player. However, the referee ruled out the effort of judging the Balamoney man offside. After the break, Linfield took the game to Balamoney. Stephen Bradley won this free kick. And having hit the target early in the first half, no one could blame William Francie for trying his luck again, this time hitting the side netting. United's midfield and front three continued to ask questions. McAleese found Scott Munis. Minus couldn't find one of his colleagues with this cross. Jack Berry then unravelled the Balamoney defence after some midfield pinball. United keeper Donnelly cleared the ball up towards halfway. Linfield were quickest to react to the second ball. And Jack Berry weaved his way past McMullen and Ram McNichol and finished with the plot. Yeah. Barry very nearly scored his third and Linfield's fourth, catching United skipper Holmes in possession. Scampering towards goal only for a fine last minute tackle by McMullen. Barry continued his pursuit of his hat trick. 20 minutes into the half, he picked up the ball 30 yards from goal before sending this shot narrowly over the Balamoni target. Leading by three goals to one, Linfield started to dominate the chances. Again, Berry was a central figure. 
the diminutive midfielder off target once again, just moments after his last attempt on goal. Moments later, again, it was Linfield who came in search of their fourth. Defender Luke Reddington was next to search forward. Donnelly, though, saving this shot with ease. Linfield won a penalty with five minutes to play. Francie found Berry in space, momentarily losing possession to McNichol. He got his body back into a great position, and he was then brought down, and the ref pointed to the spot. Luke Reddington stepped up to take it. It's not one that the Linfield player will want to see again. Jack Berry, however, was not to be denied. And when United's McMullen had his pass intercepted by Francie, Berry hit the target once more for his hat trick. Quite the performance from the Linfield player. And there was still time for Linfield to get a fifth goal. Francie's crossfield ball was lashed home by Ethan Davidson. Full time for Midgley. Linfield five, Balamani one. Particularly in the second half, I thought it was a good way we moved the ball a wee bit quicker and uh, getting Jack Berry on the ball, which his hat trick was with brilliantly. Jack's performance is just unreal, like, you know, he, when he gets on the ball, his dribbling, his movement, his awareness is absolutely another different gravy, if you want to say. Like. Our opponents today, I thought Balamoni came out in the second half with a wee bit more bite about them and they caused us problems for the first 15-20 minutes. But then once we got our goals in, like, it was just a matter of more and more goals. Like. Yeah, no, definitely. I thought in the first half we more acquitted ourselves quite well. We kept ourselves in the game. The game plan was to go in at half-time, to still be within the game. And to be honest, I thought we passed the ball quite well. We matched them, and it's harsh whenever you come off the pitch and you've lost 5-1 and you sort of think to yourself, that that last 10, 15 minutes just unfold it. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of key moments in the game in terms of the one in the first half where we could have went in 2-2 two -two at half time. You know, tight decision. You go in in the, their third goal, another tight decision where they get the chance that they go through and they score. And the game was finished at that stage because not only did they score, go 3-1 up, but to lose our main player, who was actually holding the ball up really well, scored a couple of good goals, one uh, counted, one didn't count. That was just the game, but the, you know, I have to be very proud of our players. We've come up here, we knew it was going to be a tough ask, but I think we more, more than matched them feeling contained them. And the reality is the two goals they scored in the first half were from long distance. So they never really get behind us, bar one chance from a free kick to really put pressure on us. So it's, it's disappointing, but that's the way it goes. What do you say to the young 